E-Ink, it's a bit like magic. Especially when used to build a product like this amazing dashboard that you can stick anywhere in your home or office. This is the terminal, a 7.5 inch E-Ink display. And I wanna tell you why you need it in your life right now. As some of you may know, I'm a big fan of podcasts. I listen to them every day. And one of my favorite podcasts is called ATP, the Accidental Tech Podcast. It's a show mostly about Apple and the technology sphere around that particular company. And as a result of the sizable audience that ATP has built, they often have sponsors on each episode. And recently, one of the sponsors was a company I'd never heard of, Terminal. Their ad claimed that the Terminal e-ink dashboard serves as an antidote to our modern addiction to screens that aim to steal attention, flood you with dopamine-draining notifications, and infuse existential dread into your soul from your ever-growing email inbox. Terminal, they promised, is an unobtrusive device that sits politely on your desk. Um, it provides you with only the information that you've asked for and never begs for attention. It also promises to never force you to sign up for yet another wallet-draining subscription. This is the Terminal, and I want to tell you all about it. Okay, before I open this guy, I want to tell you about the company behind this device. First, they're very new. The company officially launched in July of 2024, and they still boast a very small team. So this device is not coming from some giant corporate company like Apple or Samsung, uh, who for all intents and purposes have unlimited budgets to design, build, and market their products. No, Terminal is a very small outfit, and if you read their blog, you'll quickly learn that they are both learning as they go, but also trying to be very transparent about their business, which is something I always find both educational and um, informative. So as you can see, the Terminal arrives in the small box, and frankly, uh, it's a little bit beaten up from the shipping process, but no big deal. I've seen much jankier packaging from much larger companies. So this box is perfectly adequate. I also noticed that they've got a little marketing message in the top right here that says Terminal is the antidote to doom scrolling. As we open the box, we see that inside is the device itself, a 7.5 inch e-ink display, a USB-C charging cable with USB-C, USB-C uh, on both ends, thankfully, and uh, some instructions that are printed on the inside of the box. Let's talk about the design of this little guy. The terminal currently comes in just one size. A little bit more on that later. From corner to corner, the device measures nearly 8 inches, and the screen from corner to corner is almost exactly 7.5 inches. The company has hinted that they're working on a second product, and if I had to guess, I'd bet they're working on something larger. Nevertheless, I have the white version here, but it's also available in a few other color enclosures. Black, clear, sage, uh, gray, and a nice faux wood finish. The case or enclosure itself is a soft touch ABS plastic, and it does feel nice to the touch. The bezels are a reasonable size, though I would prefer if they were the same size all around. And I'm not sure if adding this thicker chin here was a compromise based on the components inside, or if the company was simply dead set on including their inset logo on the front of the device, which I actually don't mind too much. Looking at the back, you'll see a few things that stand out immediately. First, you have this simple chrome-plated kickstand, which you can set at two distinct angles. It's an okay kickstand, but I think there's some room for improvement. In a future iteration of this product, I'd love to see this kickstand allow you a greater degree of freedom in terms of angle selection. Next, back here, we've got a picture hook frame at the top. If you want to hang this somewhere on a wall or other flat surface, this will help you accomplish that. No complaints there. Uh, this series of holes on the back here, I'm not 100% sure what they are. But if I had to guess, I'd say they're probably vent holes to allow heat to escape from the battery. After all, you don't want the battery to get too hot on an all plastic enclosure or device like this. Um, and of course, on the back, we also have the on off button, um, as well as the small click button here, 
uh, that lets you rotate through your playlists. We'll get to those a little bit later. And of course, you also have the USB-C charging port here. Overall, the terminal is a handsomely built device. Are there fit and finish tolerances as tight as you would get in an Apple device or a Samsung device? Obviously not, but I wouldn't expect that at this price point. And the fact that this is still a tiny company. In any case, if I had to change anything about the hardware, it would be the positioning of the playlist rotation button and the USB-C charging port. From a usability perspective, I feel like both those should be more accessible by living on one of the sides of the case. And I should mention that this thing is really lightweight. It's only 5.8 ounces or 160 grams. Definitely less than your phone, but more useful if you're looking to avoid distractions. Let's talk about this 7.5 inch e-ink display. First, there's no backlight. This is not the same type of screen technology that you get on your phone or tablet or laptop. It's an e-ink display, which means there are no tiny LEDs to power. Uh, this is also not a touchscreen, it's just a display. Now, if you don't know what e-ink is, it's basically a low power paper-like display uh, that has existed in one form or another since the 1970s when the researchers at Xerox PARC conceived it. It wasn't until the late 90s that it became a full-blown product and began to be incorporated into various devices. E-ink displays come in grayscale and color, and as you can see, the terminal here uses a simple gray grayscale display. The resolution is 800 by 480 pixels, which may seem tiny in our modern age of high-res mobile displays, but you'd be surprised how good any of the information being displayed on the screen looks. By using an e-ink display, the terminal can boast about the fact that its screen maintains extremely good visibility in nearly any lighting condition, including direct sun or in a dimly lit room. And off-axis viewing is incredibly good. Additionally, e-ink displays that are, are the kings of low power draws. The, that means that you can go months without having to recharge this device. Speaking of the battery, when you're purchasing the terminal, you'll be given the option of buying the standard battery, which is a 1800 milliampere hour battery, uh, which on average use will last you about three months of continuous runtime, or the 2500 milliampere hour battery, which should last you about six months of continuous runtime. Yeah, that's right. A gadget whose battery is measured in months, not hours or days. It's pretty impressive. One thing I should mention is that how long your battery will last between charges is highly dependent on how often your screen refreshes. This is a custom setting you can set for each playlist screen. I'll talk about this a bit more in the software dashboard section of this video. As I mentioned earlier, the battery is recharged through a USB-C port on the back of the device. That means if it's hanging up on a wall or your refrigerator, you'll have to take it down to charge. But if you have it standing somewhere like on your desk or your kitchen counter, you can simply pop in your cable and then it's charging. One other small thing I noticed is that there's a small LED on the back of the tablet to show you the status of your charging, which is fine, though as you can see, some of that light then seeps through to the front of the display. That's not ideal, but for the couple of hours that you'll be charging this thing every three or six months, it's really a small thing, but just something to know and probably something for Terminal to work on uh, changing in their future revisions of this product. In theory, this device is incredibly easy to set up, and I'm sure that has been the experience for a lot of people. But like another YouTuber that reviewed this product, I ran into a bit of a snag during the initial setup. The first thing that Terminal asks you to do is to get it connected to your Wi-Fi network so we can call on the web server for the data it needs to display. Unfortunately for me, I kept getting an error from the tablet stating that it was unable to connect to my Wi-Fi network. Thankfully, I had previously watched a few other reviews of this product on YouTube, and one reviewer in particular described the same issue and their workaround. Like many people these days, my home Wi-Fi network is set up as a dual 2.4G and 5G network and for some technical reason, it was refusing to connect to the network until I either changed my wireless mode away from mixed or turned off my 5G wireless altogether. 
Thankfully, since I made that change, the terminal has had no further issues connecting to the Wi-Fi network. That said, while I'm not a super technical nerd, I'm technical enough to be able to troubleshoot stuff like this fairly easily. But the aver average person probably won't. So my suggestion to Terminal is that they figure out a way to fix this particular setup issue. So how's the Terminal work and how do you get it to display the information you want on this dashboard? Well, once you're done with the initial setup, you'll then be able to go into your dashboard on the Terminal website, which is located at usetrmnl.com dashboard. The Terminal works by letting you set up custom playlists, which you can think of as one or more screens. Each screen can display information from one to four plugins, which you can think of as apps. There's also some confusion on this playlist screen as the button on the top right here is named Add a Plugin, though it should really be named Add a Screen. When you mouse over the Add a Plugin button, you're shown the various page layout options which you can choose from. This is sort of an uh, information density decision you're making with the layout options. That is, how much info do you want to show? Do you want each screen to show? When choosing to edit each screen, you can pick which plugins you want to show on that particular screen from these drop down menus. Now, in this screen, you can see I have the 2x2 two two grid, so I have four plugins to choose for that screen. Each screen allows you to set the re refresh interval. Um, in other words, how often do you want this screen to refresh with new data from Terminal's web server? As a quick aside, the way Terminal's web server works is that it integrates with a variety of services from around the web, which are called plugins in Terminal's terminology, and essentially sends an image file to your Terminal device with the updated information. In any case, you can set a refresh rate of 5, 10, 15, 30, 45, or 60 minutes for each screen. Additionally, you can set a custom schedule using this little calendar view, a nice little bit of fine-tuned control. Okay, let's talk about what you can display on the terminal dashboard. As you can see, there are well over 80 first-party plugins that were created and maintained by Terminal. You can think of these apps that uh, you can think of these as apps that let you display information from a variety of sources. This includes everything from Apple Photos to the New York City Metro schedule, your GitHub commit graph, Shopify store sales, practically any RSS feed, uh, Beehive stats from your latest newsletter send, a screensaver, a Chat GPT integration that lets you enter a prompt and have it show you the answer. Uh, Google Tasks, Wikipedia articles, analytics out of your Square account, uh, Google Analytics, a variety of calendar integrations, including Google, Apple, Outlook, and others. I imagine that as time goes on, this library of plugins will continue to grow. But in, in addition to these first-party plugins supported by Terminal, there are a variety of private plugins that have been developed by members of the Terminal community. Each of these can be installed in one click, and as of, as of this recording, there's 311 of them. And also because the terminal is a very de developer-friendly device, you can pay $20 and build your own plugin either for yourself or for public consumption. And speaking of developers, if you know some HTML, you can build custom plugins in minutes. The terminal is an open source product, which also means that you can use their perfectly safe and privacy focused architecture on a device not made by terminal. The company has all kinds of fun integrations like that. For example, you can display your terminal playlists and screens on your iPad or an Android device. A few more items worth mentioning as they relate to the way your terminal operates. If you go to your dashboard and then go to device settings, you can change things like your name, uh, see your battery life, enable a, a low battery email notification, and set a sleep schedule as well. You can also have multiple terminal devices linked to your account and manage them all inside this dashboard. The terminal currently sells at two price points, $139 for the black, white, or clear version, and $154 for the sage, gray, or wood enclosure. There are also a few add-on options, which are a battery upgrade, as I mentioned earlier, to the 2500 milliampere hour version, 
and which is uh, an extra $10. Uh, developer access, which is an extra $20, and a charging cable, which is uh, a branded one meter long USB-C uh, with 20 watts power for uh, a few extra bucks. So is this device worth your hard earned money? Without a doubt, I love this thing. This thing has become one of my favorite gadgets and has earned a spot amidst the valuable real estate on my desk. Yeah, you could probably buy all the components, including the battery and logic board and e-ink screen for a little less, but why do that if you don't have to? This is a mostly user-friendly little package that almost anyone can use. Uh, small setup issues aside, I, I really love this thing and didn't even mind the conversion from USD to CAD, uh, which came out to be about $200 Canadian with uh, the charging cable and battery upgrade. On the other hand, what I did mind was the extra tariff I had to pay as a Canadian customer. Uh, but of course, we all know who we have to thank for that stupidity, don't we? One thing I've become somewhat zealot about is that when you buy any sort of device like this, buy it for what it can do for you now, not for any future promises to add features or plugins. That said, the people at Terminal have just announced a new version of their device called the Terminal X which will have a larger screen at 10.3 inches with a higher res, uh, resolution at 1872 by 1404 resolution, uh, featuring a 16-bit grayscale screen. Uh, there will be no branding on the front and the connector will be changed to a magnetic connector uh, with USB-C charging, uh, screws to open the enclosure to give developers and hardware tinkerers easier access to internal hardware as well. The new Terminal X will be more expensive, however, at $307, and won't be shipping until sometime by the end of 2025. Another thing to ponder as well is how the company is incorporating the costs of running their web servers. If you're not the developer type and have no idea how to start and run your own web server uh, that you can connect your terminal to, you're basically 100% dependent on Terminal's web servers to serve up the images to your device. Uh, basically, it's only function. So will the company survive beyond X number of years? Will the company eventually be forced to charge a small subscription for that service? Who knows? These are all unknowable. But at least for now, the value of this device, in my opinion, is very good, bordering on the excellent. All right, so are you looking for a device that can help uh, replace your habit-forming phone checks with passive and focused glances? Do you need something that will help you with your backlight screen detox without going full Amish? Do you want a friendly little device that you can stick on your fridge or in your kitchen to display family calendars, weather, upcoming birthdays, or art and motivational quotes? Are you a tinkerer who can bring a world of apps to a very personal dashboard device? If you answered yes to any of those questions, I highly recommend this device for you. I understand it's not for everyone, but if you want information without distraction, unreasonably good battery life, and mildly passive aggressive reminders from your spouse, Terminal is your new flat, useful and brain friendly companion because sometimes the quietest gadget is the one you need most. All right, if you're seriously considering picking one of these up, I've left a link in the description for you. You can also use code WARNSIMPLE, all one word at checkout to get $10 off your order of a terminal dashboard. So what would you display on your terminal dashboard? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, hit that like button if you appreciate the chaos minimizing powers of e-ink and subscribe for more gadget reviews like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.